Whether you're in North or South Carolina or anywhere else in the world, you're in the Cat Cave with Michael Davis, Ryan Frick, and Shane Smith to listen to your favorite Carolina Panthers podcast, The Cat Cave. It's a part of the Keep Pound Podcast Network and the Fans First Sports Network. Welcome into the Cat Cave, everyone. We're so glad that you're joining us today. And yes, to answer some questions, uh, the Panther season is officially over. We covered the final game of their season last week against Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, the Buccaneers obviously win the NFC South and then advancing past the wild card round to the divisional round. Uh, but we're not going to talk about, you know, all of that doom and gloom because let's be honest. Yeah. The NFL season lasts 18 weeks of a year. There's a playoff, and, but the NFL season never really ends because there's so much content there's an off season. There's coaching changes. There's free agency draft. And before you know it, you're in train camp or OTA. So we, as a collective, have scheduled out what you're going to be seeing on the Cat Cave while you wait for more Panthers football come in August. It's going to be it's going to be seven months, but we got you covered here inside the Cat Cave. Uh, welcome in, our guys. Uh, first off, we got. Uh, somebody with a really nice beard. I had to trim mine up this week for the shows, but Ryan kept his. Ryan, how are you doing today? I'm good, man. You mentioned the Bucks beating the beating the uh, the breaks off in the Eagles in the playoff game. Now they get to take on the Detroit Lions up in Detroit, so I'm pretty excited to, for that. But uh, excited to talk some Panthers off season with you guys today. Hey, best of luck to you and your Lions with Dan Campbell. Uh, really good Cinderella story there. Uh, but they'll have to, you know, face the 49ers potentially at some point. 49ers played the Packers uh, this upcoming weekend, and we got Shan Smith with a 49ers logo in the background. Shan, how are you doing? Hey, man, I'm doing great. I'm looking forward to seeing if Jordan Love has a little something for my guys. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, time that we're going to be having on the Cat Cave discussing what the Panthers are going to do, discussing things, all things football. Looking forward to it, man. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, let's go. Now, there's some teams in the playoffs. There's some teams that were in the playoffs. Uh, we're not going to mention that. I said we're not going to mention that. Um, no. But what we – this let's is a Carolina – this is a Carolina Panthers podcast. We're going to focus on the Carolina Panthers. And so if you're listening to the audio <laughs> on Fans First Sports Network or you're watching the video feed on the Tobacco Road Sports Radio's YouTube channel, which you should subscribe to, we're going to spend the next few weeks evaluating this team because that's what the Carolina Panthers are, or let's be honest, should be doing right now. They should be evaluating the job the coaching staff did the job that the offensive team did and the defensive team. Okay. Even special teams, they got to evaluate all three, four facets of their team. And that's what we're going to take the time on the cat cave to do uh, very intricately. And so one of the first topics I wanted to bring up is Panthers obviously are looking for a new head coach. Panthers actually fired Frank Wright in his first year of being the Carolina Panthers head coach and put in Tabor as the interim head coach. And so we're going to evaluate these guys. Um, one of the questions I wanted to pose to y'all, uh, and Ryan, we'll start with you, is Frank Wright. Because if you look back at the season, uh, after they fired Frank Wright, things didn't get better. They didn't push for a very obtainable NFC South crown. Do you think they should have given Frank Wright more time to write the ship or at least, you know, put a Band-Aid over it? Or were they good in firing Frank Wright when they did midseason? I mean, Mike, to your point, they didn't get better when they fired Frank Wright. So maybe he wasn't the problem at all. Like, I don't want to say that he, that he could have made it any better. But the idea that Frank Wright was the scapegoat for this team. Because as you mentioned, outside of one game where they scored – 35 points and still didn't win. The Panthers offense never got better. The defense continued to play the way they did. They held the NFC South champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers to nine points in the final week of the season. Uh, for all intents and purposes, could have beaten the Bucs had they not essentially had one touchdown 
uh, get called back to penalty and another get brought back because DJ Chark fumbled the ball through the back of the end zone. So, uh, you know, the off, the offense never got better. The defense stayed the way the defense was. But to answer your question, I don't, I don't think it mattered if they fired Frank Reich in the middle of year one or waited to the end of the season. Uh, ownership had their mind made up because of how bad this team was. Ownership is uh, ownership is 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 a child playing with real money. It's it's a it's a guy who who is running a team like he's got monopoly money, throwing throwing money around, and he's paying two different head coaches seventy million plus dollars not to be the head coach for the Carolina Panthers next season. So you know, yeah, I I, I you could make the argument that he deserved the full year to see if he could have righted the ship, but they gave him 10 or 11 weeks, whatever it was before they fired him to write the ship. And, and he couldn't do it. And the unfortunate part about it is that the, the coaches that took over uh, couldn't write the ship specifically on the offensive side of the ball, uh, which is something the Panthers have struggled with ever since Cam Newton got out of his prime. So now I don't think it would have mattered. I think that the, the decision would have been the same uh, problem was, is I think they let, they, they kept the general manager a little too long. I mean, general manager sort of, put us in this position to not have a future for the next couple of years. I mean, we could have the number one overall pick for the second straight year. And instead we have, uh, we don't have a pick until the second, maybe the third round. Um, and unless they make some crazy trades to work them back into the first round of, of the 2024 NFL draft. So yeah, it's, I don't, I don't think it would have made a difference because the team didn't get better without them, but the team wasn't getting, getting better with them. So uh, our, our, our 14 year old mindset owner decided to do what he did and, and we'll see what happens going forward. So before I get Shan's opinion on this, I do want to mention something because you're like the owner's acting like a child. And it's very, it's very interesting. Like I know in like younger years when you're like an older teenager or you're just turning an adult and you like look at your parents and you're like, I can do anything I want. I'm like Mr. Big Shot, whatever. Like I was that way as a kid. Like I'll, I'll, I'll be honest and be transparent here inside the cat cave since it's just the three of us and everybody listening on Tobacco Road Sports Radio's YouTube channel and Fans First Sports Network. But like I would make some really dumb decisions, but I, lear I learned pretty quickly that I was actually accountable for my actions. And it was because my parents were coming down on me. Well, like, I think I mean, David Tepper needs to like, he's got to have consequences for acting like a child, whether that's the rest of the ownership group or Roger Goodell. I mean, we, we all were at that age at some point where we were playing a video game or we were playing action figures or toys with our friends and something didn't go the way we, way we wanted it to. And so a video game, we threw the controller. If, we, if our older brother or, or our cousin or whatever the case was, was beating us pretty bad in Madden, we would throw the controller, we'd walk away, like, I'm not doing this anymore. That's what David Tepper did uh, with, with Frank Wright. That's what he did with the fan down in Jacksonville. Like, he is a big child who got lucky in the stock market to make enough money to where he could buy the Carolina Panthers. And ever since he, he took ownership over the team, he's he's – driven this organization and this team and, and its fan base into the ground. So yeah, it's, it's, it's an unfortunate state of affairs that we found ourselves in as, um as, as Carolina Panthers supporters and fans and, and, and otherwise. Yeah. And Shannon, when we look at this coaching staff, like Frank Wright didn't get the time he needed, but what do you think about Chris Tabor's time as the interim coach? Did he have enough time to show you if he was the right man for the job or not? And honestly, do you think he should be in Carolina in 2024? I think I got to go with Ryan because this team didn't get any better. This team just pretty much, it was a stalemate. So I think it's kind of like what we were talking about with uh, you could put anybody behind that Carolina Panthers offensive line and you still can get the same result. It doesn't matter if it's C.J. Stroud. It doesn't matter if it's uh, Joe Flacco, Tom Brady, even 91 Dan Marino. You put anybody behind that line, it doesn't matter. You're going to get the same result. And that's what I feel like the uh, head coaching job was for whoever took it. It didn't matter who you put there. It was basically you're going to get the same result. You're going to get a carbon copy of what um, Frank Reich had. So – to me, it didn't matter who you put there. Um, 
And that's no disrespect to Chris Tabor. That's no disrespect to um, Frank Wright, because once again, front office has a lot more to do with this team than what everybody thinks it does. Because, I mean, you have to put a team together for these guys to go out there and perform and do what they do on the field. And front office didn't do so much. They dropped the ball, mortgage in the farm, like Ryan said. They – um threw away their key components, put together a cookie cutter team and expected a better result, which was not what you do as a front office, what you do as a general manager. And of course you do have the man child known as David Tepper running your team. So that to me is recipe for disaster. You got a squad that was poorly put together. You have a uh, owner that is not going to be accountable And then you've got everybody on the field trying to pick up the pieces, put the pieces together, and it's just not working. Well, Shan, here's the thing, though, is like, and I agree wholeheartedly with what you said, what Ryan said, but there's a saying where you can only control what's in your realm of control, like control the controllables. And that's where I think a lot of this falls on the coordinators. We've talked about David Tepper, that – Ownership is not resolving itself unless the NFL or C- Commissioner Goodell steps in. But the coordinators had an opportunity to be like, hey, here's what I can do with a really bad offensive line and a rookie quarterback and no chemistry. Um, here's what defensive coordinator could do. I think they did two different jobs. Um, but first I want to talk about Thomas Brown. Ryan, do you think Thomas Brown has to carry some of the blame when it comes to how – bad this offensive was not only just one game not just two games but pretty much the entire season outside of maybe that Packers game that they also lost I mean Frank Reich gave him play calling duties and nothing got better and so he took the play calling duties back before Frank Reich got fired uh to Shannon's point it doesn't matter if you've got uh prime Peyton Manning or or Bryce Young the, I'm not sure you can put the blame on on Thomas Brown. I think the blame goes on Scott Fitterer. I mean, Scott Fitterer made a made a phenomenal trade to get. In fairness, he did right by Christian McCaffrey by getting Christian McCaffrey onto a contender in San Francisco and getting a haul of draft picks in return. Scott Fitterer set this team up to 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 be able to get some some draft capital and to build a team. And then he decided, you know what? Let's 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 put all of our our eggs in the basket that is Bryce Young, and let's everything that we did by letting go of our franchise player. Let's undo it by letting go of the the number two franchise player for this offense and getting getting a rookie quarterback. That doesn't fall on Thomas Brown. It doesn't fall on on Josh McCown, the, the former co- quarterbacks coach. It doesn't fall on Deuce Staley, the former running backs coach. It doesn't. It, none of it falls on the coaching staff for me. They wanted to go try to get these flashy, flashy uh, signings. Whether you're talking about Adam Thielen and, and and Hayden Hurst, whether you're talking about going and trading up to get the number one overall pick, they very easily could have gotten an Anthony Richardson if they had not given up so much and traded for the number three pick, or gotten a Will Levis if they had kept the number nine pick. They could have done plenty of things that Frank Reich and company could have worked with, but they didn't invest in an offensive line. And uh, and, and Federer decided to trade to, to mortgage the future for for one quarterback uh, without any anybody that can that can really truly protect him, and that's what we got on the field. I don't I don't blame Thomas Brown. I don't blame any of the offensive coaches. Like all the blame falls on David Tepper and to an extent Scott Fitter. Ryan's not blaming the coordinators, but I think uh, you have to control what you can control. I think Thomas Brown didn't do any favors for the Panthers' offense. But Idro Evero, the defense coordinator for the Panthers, like did. And I think there's something to say about Evero and the way he stepped up as defensive coordinator. The Panthers ranked uh, fourth best in yards in terms of yards given up on the defense. And the top five was the Browns playoff team, Chiefs playoff team, Cowboys playoff team until last week, and then the Jets, who – had the defense, they just lost their starting quarterback week one and had to play Zach Wilson. Minute like, one. Minute one of the season they lost. Minute one. 
they yeah. lost Aaron Rodgers. And so I guess they're running it back with Robert Sala. I mean, who knows? <laughs> but um Chan, like Evero's yeah. work as a defensive coordinator is to be commended. Um, if anything on this Panthers organization is to be commended, it's Evero and his work as a defensive coordinator. Uh, do you think he proved to himself that you know maybe he should even be considered as the head coach of the Carolina Panthers? I think he has. I mean, when Frank Wright got fired, I was thinking that Evero was was going to step up and be the head coach. And I see why he wasn't because he was coaching that defense and that was pretty much his baby. And that was what was keeping Carolina into their games was their defense. I mean, their defense was playing lights out very consistently, but you know, when your offense doesn't manufacture points, you know, your defense looks very bad. The special teams kind of looks bad as well too, because the field position is a, it's a game of inches is what football is. And so I see why Evero wasn't the head coach because the defense was doing it for them. But in turn, Evero was getting looked at to be head coach, be a head coach somewhere else. He's being considered to be head coach somewhere else. I don't know what's going to happen unless they get rid of the special teams coach, their interim coach, unless they get rid of him and then put Evero as the head coach, which I don't know how that will work because I'm pretty sure he's here in interviews right now. And who can blame him? But um, he's shown him that he could be a head coach. I believe he has. And he's being one of those seven um, assistant coaches that's being considered a new wave head coach that's coming up real soon. You know, he's 43 years old. He's a fairly young coach. He can um, link with some of these players. He's not fairly old. Um, he can link with these guys. And that's what he's done with this defense, even with the injuries to Shaq Thompson. Um, he still was able to link with a lot of those guys and they played for him. I think he can control a locker room, which is what you have to do as a head coach. That locker room is everything. And I think he can do that. So why not give him a chance? I think with all the injuries that the Panthers sustained, especially in the secondary, particularly surrounding JC Horn, who never stays healthy. And I said last year on the cat cave that you should trade JC Horn while you can. And now you might not be able to get anything for him. Just FYI, I wanted to remind Ryan that his game cocks aren't always perfect. No. Okay. He can, he can, they, they, there's a chance that they can get something. Cam Smith down in Miami, that's a different story. I mean, the guy was a second round pick and he was, he wasn't getting game, game time over, over practice squad players down for the Dolphins. But JC Horn has shown when he's been on the field that he can produce. The problem is how often can he stay on the field? I think at this point, you have to consider trading him to get draft capital back. But uh, to call mm -hmm. him, uh, I don't, I don't to say that you can't get anything for him is a little, is a little, I don't well, know. It, it, yeah, I, the I don't best think the right way to put it. The best ability is availability. And if you look, JC Horn <laughs> was drafted, what, eighth overall? That's a first round pick. You're not going to get a first round pick for JC Horn. Oh, yeah. by the way, you could have drafted Micah Parsons. Just Ooh. saying. Hey, you know what? Before we get on to that right there, you better leave that man's name out of, out of your mouth right there because let me tell you what, he's talked a lot of junk about my 49ers and where's he at? Where's he's that man? Hey, we, no, you're non existent. We were you not talk, going. You, you talk whoa. a lot of junk about Debo Samuel. I heard what that man said. I heard what that man said. He sat there the whole time and he gave Brock Purdy all this crap. See, you opened up a can of worms right there. This is your fault. Yeah. No, so I your gave fault. Brock Purdy flowers. About Brock I gave Brock Purdy flowers. And where is he at? Yo, no, not you, him. I'm talking about him. No, this, Micah is, this Parsons. is not towards you, but he said a lot of stuff. Micah Parsons said a lot of stuff about Brock Purdy. Oh, he's not. He, he can be figured out. He can be this. He can be that. And then Debo going towards you like that. On top of the fact that it, if, if Brock Purdy can be figured out, how, how did, you couldn't figure out Jordan Love? Come on. Get out of here. Then. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're in the cat cave. <laughs> We're in the cat cave. <laughs> this cat isn't a lion, oh, and we oh, don't man. have to count to 49. <laughs> you know, thankfully, Ryan probably couldn't count that high if he – That's hilarious. Anyway. I have a college Ooh. degree, okay? Ooh. Don't count <laughs> me, dude. From what university? Is that how many years it took Detroit to get there? Is that – is that how no, many years I, it took Detroit to get to the playoffs? Listen, 49 years? Plenty, plenty of people go to college for seven years. Yeah, they're called doctors. I'm kidding. I, it only took me five. <laughs> I got my degree. Okay? 
I can't count to 49. I can count hey, to 49 man, in Spanish. Good. Get out of here. All right, go. <laughs> but this is the cat cave. We ain't trying to educate people in Espanol. We're going to be here all night. Yeah. We're going to be here all night if we do. I, mean, I, I can do it. But I don't, I don't, we're, we're, I'm not – this isn't This isn't hooked on phonics. This is, what's, what's the what's the, the, the Spanish-speaking thing we're trying to get? I'm not trying to teach people Rosetta their Stone. Spanish numbers. Rosetta Stone, yeah. This ain't Rosetta Stone. This is the cat cave. Yeah, Rosetta Stone. If you want to learn how to, how, to, how to say your numbers in Spanish, go to school. Stay in school, go to college. You've got to take semesters of Spanish, whatever the case is. But you know, hey, if you're yes. listening, uh, try to get us a Duolingo uh, sponsorship in the Cat Cave because we all know Ryan needs it. We're gonna. I, I love. I love the fact. Very soon. I just want to. I want to make it clear. I love the fact that that Mike is the one that brought up. We could have gotten Micah Parsons, and as soon as he starts getting dragged, like, hey guys, hey, hey, we got to get back on track here, guys. We can't. We're not going to talk about the Cowboys. No, 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 Mike, that's you would get good, multiple first argument. round picks for Mike. JC, that's not a good Horn, you get a fourth yeah, round pick. That's not a good argument. That's not a good argument, though, because Michael Parsons, if he had gotten oh, drafted by the, by the Panthers, we don't know what he would have turned into with Carolina. He might not have been the impactful linebacker slash, slash playmaker that he is in Dallas. The same way that people try to argue that Panthers, the Panthers got it wrong with C.J. Stroud. If the Panthers get C.J. Stroud, he struggles just as bad as exactly. Bryce Young. Saying that, that that the Panthers would have gotten a better player in, in getting that. Micah Parsons, you don't know what he could have. Maybe he comes to Carolina and he gets hurt the same way J.C. Horn does. You don't know. So saying that we had the opportunity, yeah, we also had the opportunity to draft Brett Favre years ago. Well, not not draft Brett Favre because the Panthers weren't around then. We had we had we had the opportunity to draft plenty of guys that didn't come to Carolina that turned out to be all pros and this that and the other, and we didn't have we didn't get them. Yeah. That's you can't say that that, that, that Micah Parsons would be the all pro that he is had he gotten drafted by the Panthers and that the Panthers made the mistake by getting by getting uh JC Horn instead of Michael Parsons. We don't know how it worked. We don't know how it played panned out. Like if it, you redraft if you redrafted today Ryan, you also got to redrafted today. You got to understand. You have the one but you got to understand also too. Right? <laughs> but see, you got to understand saying, also too. This it, is coming from the man that had a chance to gra- uh, draft Randy Most. Yeah, I, I this get it. From, right. This come from a team that had a chance to draft Randy Moss. I, I understand. I, mean, I understand <laughs> your point. Had gaps. Dallas has had gaps. I, I understand I if, totally if you if you redraft. Okay. I understand that Carolina probably would rather have Micah Parsons than J.C. Horn. But at the time, you didn't know that. And J. And J.C. Horn. Pretty sure. I mean, J.C. Horn. At, at the time, we thought again, all, all things being equal, and he stays healthy. J.C. Horn might be the, the one of the, the best defensive backs in the league. But we don't know that because he hasn't played a full season yet. Now, again, you want to trade him for a second and third round draft pick? By all means. I'm not opposed to letting him go at this point. But at the beginning of the season, I think I made it clear. And I was like, you know what? I, I think it's too early to say it's time to trade J.C. Horn. And, I've, and I, I, I'm not going to go back on those words. But I think now, considering that we have no future, uh, at least for this upcoming draft, if you need to try to get draft capital and you, and you find another team Who's like, you know what, JC Horn, we can get him to stay. I mean, look at Detroit and, and DeAndre Swift. Swift didn't have a full year healthy mm-hmm. in, in Detroit. And he's basically a pro bowler in Philadelphia, had a phenomenal season up in Philadelphia, but he couldn't stay healthy in Detroit. Maybe you a fresh start. JC Horn gets healthy. Yeah. You get JC Horn healthy somewhere, and he's, and, he, and he's a he's a good plug. Yeah. Now, shout out to uh, DeAndre Swift not staying healthy because that means Jamal Williams helped me win my fantasy league. Not this past year, but the year before. Uh, he only had one <laughs> touchdown uh, this season, and we're not even talking mm. about that because if there's one tangent I can get on. It's one anti Jameis Winston and how <laughs> awful of an employee. <laughs> you just made me. You got you got but, me hungry, man. I want some crab legs right now. I don't know where that came from. Hey. <laughs> You mentioned, you mentioned the Saints football, and something just made me hungry for some crab legs and some seafood. I don't know what. He's probably that eating is. that he's L right now. In that victory, he's in that victory formation, is what he's in, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah as he sits on the sideline, run play and... out of there. You stop right. it! Come on, man! You don't, stop it! Don't. <laughs> Famous Winston will not be a Saint next year, and more than that, he probably won't even have no. a job in the NFL next year. 
And but, he uh, shouldn't, man. I mean, he could have hurt somebody doing that mess right there, man. You could have hurt somebody doing that, man. I mean, they like, weren't ready, and you can tell. I mean, they did fire the offensive coordinator nah. in, in New Orleans too. So we don't, we don't, we're not, we're not sure what the Saints are going to look like next season. But I digress. do you think that's the reason why he got fired, though? Do you think that that plays the reason why he got fired? Not at all. No. He got fired because the Saints, <laughs> the Saints were the preseason favorite to win the division. And and for all intents and purposes, couldn't do it. the worst, the worst, they or the second, it. arguably the worst or the second worst division in football, and you couldn't win it. Like that's yeah, you're, yeah. you're lucky. Everybody else has their job. Man, look at what's hey, going on I mean, in Jacksonville right now, man. Yeah, it's a very I mean, good point. You lost the season hey, to a rookie hey. quarterback, man. For real, I, I know injuries happen, but you lost the you lost the whole division to a rookie quarterback. So you know, you already know somebody in Jacksonville is about to get gut. There might be a scapegoat or two, but the Carolina Panthers currently do not have a head coach. And in our closing moments of no. the Cat Cave this week, we want to do a little coaching wish list. Okay, how this is going to work hey. is I'm going to ask one of our hosts right here. Okay, who do you want? Like, if you could get anybody, barring any like realistic expectations, like, okay, I want this guy. The only thing, only requirement is he has to be alive. Okay, you want to get this guy on the team. Okay, that's who you really, really, really want. Uh, I want you to vouch for the Panthers to actually then realistically sign someone. Who is somebody who's like, oh, we could we could easily see him with the Panthers. Now we're recording this late Tuesday night. It's going to be dropped Wednesday afternoon. Anything can happen in the world broadcast in the next twelve to sixteen hours. Um, Ryan, we're going to start with you. Who do you want? But who do you think will be the Panthers head coach in 2024? The uh, the the who do I think uh, is is not a good question because I have no idea. Um, I it, it, there's so many coaches that are out there right now uh, that you know that that are going to be with different teams next year. Uh, you look at you look from 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 Los Angeles Chargers. You look at Mike Vrabel from Tennessee. I think you got to look at I, you've, as the Panthers. You've already made the mistake of letting Steve Wilkes walk last year. At this point, I think you've got to give the job to Ijiro Evero. The defensive coordinator uh, had one of the t- top 10 defenses in the league behind an offense that couldn't score against the high school team. Uh, you know, Evero is, is is proven to be to be successful for this for this team. And if you're gonna if you're gonna if, if you're gonna go and screw that up like you did with Steve Wilkes, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I know that the problem is not defense, the problem is offense. And I'm sure that David Tepper and new general manager, whoever it may be, the high rumor is that that Dan Morgan of all people have a, has a really good opportunity to be the next general manager for the Carolina Panthers. But Ijiro Evero is already interviewing for other teams right now. That he is he is a hot commodity considering the worst team in football had one of the top top five to top ten defenses in the league. I think if I wanted somebody right now, I would take Ijiro Evero as the head coach. Who do I think we're probably going to get somebody? Who is I wouldn't say unproven, but somebody who somebody who failed at their last stop. I'm talking to Mike Vrabel. I'm talking to I can't even say his name. The guy that, that got fired from the Chargers towards the end of the year. Brandon another, Staley. Brandon Staley, another Brandon defensive Staley. coach who had a who had a, a struggling defense behind a really good offense. Uh, Mike Vrabel, also a defensive minded head coach. You know, here's the thing, and something we didn't really talk about a whole lot. Uh, Jared Mayo, I believe that's Jared Mayo for the New England Patriots. Had a had a, had a Patriots. Gerard Mayo, yeah. He had a, a stipulation in his mm-hmm. contract that whenever they moved on from Bill Belichick, that he would be named as the next head coach or pay him a, an incredible buyout not to hire him. I, I, I it, it's a, it's mm. a strike of genius, a, a, a strike of genius. I don't understand why more people don't do it. And if I was Ijiro Evero, I would have tried to work that into my contract before I signed on as a defensive coordinator for this team, uh, because they're probably going to lose Evero to another another team in the NFL, potentially a Sandy, uh, uh, sorry, a Los Angeles Chargers, potentially a or Washington Falcons. Commanders, Atlanta Falcons, who just interviewed Bill Belichick this week. Uh, so, so yeah, mm-hmm. my my yeah, number one on my want list is yeah, my, number one on my my, my wish list is Ijiro Evero. Uh, I don't know who's going to be the next head coach. I will say that I don't want it to be Bill Belichick. I'm just going to throw it out there, especially when ownership said they want a head coach that will be here 
that will that will speak that will give a eulogy at his funeral and will basically be here for the next 30 years. Belichick might have another five years in coaching tops. I don't want Bill Belichick. Keep him away yes. from the franchise. Give me Ejero Evero as our next head coach. All right, Shannon. One guy you really want to be the Panthers head coach, and one guy you think actually will be the Panthers head coach in 2024. So if we're talking about once, you're talking about anybody around the league. Does it matter? Are they alive? Could be in college too. Oh, okay. Well, if there's anybody that I really, really want as the Panthers head coach, I want Antonio Pierce. If there's anybody out there, I would love to have Antonio Pierce. That man loves his team and he will love his squad and he'll go to war with his squad. And that's the type of person that you need as a head coach. If the Raiders do not sign that man, then I go into him. You know, I, I'm, I'm a 49ers fan. I can't like the Raiders anyway. But if they don't sign that man, you know, it'll be just like what Carolina done with Steve Wilkes. I mean, that would be the biggest mistake that the Raiders ever done. And the Raiders have made mistakes and blunders in their lifetime. So I don't count the Raiders out of screwing this up, but it, it's a given. I want Antonio Pierce. That's the dude I want. I like him. And I never thought I'd like a Raiders coach ever in my life. But I like him, and that's the dude I really, really want. However, I'm a realist at the end of the day. But if there is a guy that's second that I really do want and I think will probably end up being a head coach, I got to go with Evero. I got to go Ryan on that one. I think that the Panthers would be better suited having him at, as the head coach, and I think that he would really lead them in the battle and he would do really, really well. As a head coach, you know, he's worked with that defense. He's done well with that defense. The defense has been a mainstay on this squad. So I have to say the obvious pick is Evero, but the one I want, Antonio Pierce, all day long. Antonio Pierce has done a great job with the Raiders. I'd be shocked if he leaves there. Uh, mine, I, I made a take Absolutely. a few weeks ago, and I'm sticking to it for who do you want for the head coaching job and say – in the Panthers, because I think Brand Staley makes a lot of sense. Ryan gave me some credit right there. You did. Come on now. I mean, I give you credit, um, but uh, it's you know, it's it's. <laughs> he's a defensive coach, and the and the Chargers struggled on defense, and that's that's why they fired him. Here's he gets the thing, blown out. I think did he not get blown out by the Raiders? The crap. Des, sure did. Des did yeah, give crap for that. Them up, man. Um, yeah, but in terms of like co up, young man. coaches. I don't think young coaches should come to Carolina and risk losing their reputation or legacy or having to rebuild after know, failing with the Panthers. I, I don't know. It, it could happen. Like, how many times have we seen a coach in their know. first job with a bad team get released in a year or two because they didn't turn around with unrealistic expectations and then didn't get another head coaching job because we're like, oh, they suck, and we put all the blame on them. So I know I, I listen, I know Shannon had some thoughts on this, and I know we're running late. And I know we're getting cut off, but the argument can be made that the Carolina Panthers have the least favorable, the least attractive job in the in the NFL. But on the agreed. other side of it, it has the it's the most attractive job. Mm -hmm. Because if, if you're you, listen, listen, you just talked about if you're a young if you're a young guy yes. and you want to get your opportunity as a head coach, uh, you know, why where else where else would you want to go than Carolina? Because there's no expectations of success for this yes. team. You go in, Nothing. you you go you go one and seven as your first head coaching stint. Uh, you get fired. <laughs> you make a ton of money to go sit home for a little while, and then they just chalk it up. Well, he wasn't ready. Let's hire him back as a coordinator, and then he gets another shot somewhere down the line. The, for for that for that point, the Carolina Panthers I mean, is that, is a perfect job, for, especially for a first time head coach for somebody. Yeah. But is your passion making money I mean, or is your passion you go, uh, from the bottom to the top? But is your passion making money? Making a NFL? name. I mean, Fine, you can make it. a name. David, but it like, doesn't matter. It, listen, listen, it doesn't matter. As well too, man. It, it doesn't matter if, if if you're trying to make a name for yourself. If you're going to Carolina, you're not going to do anything. It, it doesn't matter. Here, here's the here's the, the beauty of it. With the Carolina Panthers, with the ownership, and I know we're running super late. I apologize to anybody listening that's, that's spending an extra few more minutes talking, listening to us talk this week or watching watching this this face made for radio talk over on Tobacco Road Sports Radio's YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> regardless, regardless of of who you are, if you come to the Carolina Panthers to be the head coach, 
Nobody cares what's going to happen because the expectation is that whoever takes over is going to fail because every the last three coaches, uh, including Ron Rivera, who nobody's talked about because, you know, I don't think he's going to come back mm-hmm. and be the next head coach, uh, whether it's Frank Reich or the next no. guy. There is no. no expectation of success. So it does. you can come in here and, it, it, yes, you want to be that guy to turn it around. But nobody's going to bat an eye if you don't do it because nobody's been able to do it since David Tepper, Tepper took over his owner in the first place. And that's the point I'm making. Yeah, you, obviously, yeah. your passion is to come in and win football games as that next head coach of the Carolina Panthers. But at the end of the day, if you you know what? Well, I'm not going to get the opportunity to coach a full season if, we're, if we start off bad anyway. I might as well come in and make some money, take that money, uh, give my family a better life for a year, go take another job and move somewhere else and never look back. It's a beautiful thing to be uh, to be looked at to be a, a, the next head coach of the Carolina Panthers because you're expected to fail, and when you don't, it's a pleasant surprise, and you look like a genius, and you look like the savior. It's a great, it's a great opportunity for anybody to come come to Carolina. If you want to feed so, your family, if you want to have a chance to uh, coach in the league, come to Carolina Panthers. Come, come to, to the Panthers. Panthers. Buy, <laughs> buy you buy yourself a lake house. As the next head coach of the Carolina Panthers, That's, <laughs> this is where you come to buy your summer you home. Go <laughs> you want to go golfing? You want to so, go golfing next? Take, uh, take that check from David you Tepper. Golfing? Yeah, let's, let's go golf. Let's <laughs> let's, like let's buy a golf. water park. <laughs> let's buy a water park. Be the next head coach. Of Carolina. <laughs> so that's all cute and all for people like us who this guy. couldn't even imagine. A million dollars, let alone, you know, multiple million dollars coaching in the NFL. And we're like, yeah, we'll uh, take a job and then get fired in six months. No coach or coordinator wants to go into a job. You don't want to go into a job and be like, I'll be out here in six months. I mean, you want to go and the pride and the ego that's inside of a man wants to be the one to turn around. Okay. Houston, Houston, D'Amico Ryans. D'Amico Ryans walked in as a former Texan with a lot to turn around, and he did it in one year, but he had the security that they're not going to move off of. Nobody walk into the Panthers organization, but but nobody in the Panthers organization will. not have that locker room. I mean, he had that locker room. That was catered for D'Amico Ryan. I mean, for real, that was catered for him. And I'm glad for him. He was my former coordinator. That was catered for him there. But, you know, it wasn't catered for uh, Frank Reich. It was not catered for him. That squad was catered for him. And plus, they had draft picks on top of draft picks. The Deshaun Watson trade helped them out tremendously. They had a yeah. lot of draft picks. They, they, didn't, they didn't trade their draft capital away. They were able to even move up. And they were able to get the pro- op- with the potential offensive rookie of the year and the defensive rookie of the year and pick two and, and, and three because they didn't mortgage their future with what they, they got know. for Deshaun Watson. That's why exactly. Houston they took seemingly everybody turned else's around future. so quick. They took everyone else's. <laughs> yeah. They took everybody but, else's future. I mean, for real. <laughs> but my, my point is – you're walking into a bad situation with bad ownership in Carolina. You're not going to want to risk your future doing that. And and that's where I stand on it. I know some people agree. I know a lot of people disagree. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't want to get fired in six have, When you don't have one. I don't want to get fired but in six But you ain't going to have no future. I mean, how are you going to risk one if you ain't – what you going to risk you ain't got? What you ain't going to got? How you going to risk what you ain't got? I mean, somebody huh? stepping away from a huh? coordinator job that they already have. They don't get a coordinator <laughs> job the next year, Mike. No, if they're, they may not. Exactly. No, I mean, if, they're, if, they're, if, they're, if they are you're acting like it's a after, no. Mike, if you're if acting you are, like it's a great guarantee. It is. Take your own always if you have are, a job. Go. <laughs> if you are a highly sought after coordinator, from another team, whether you're Steve Wilkes, whether you're, you know, the defense coordinator, was it? Was, I can't say his name, but from the Dallas Cowboys, up, he's being looked up. at. Time. Dan, Dan Quinn's being looked Dan at. Quinn. Dan Quinn. Okay. okay, Dan Quinn. If you think if you think a head coach can be so horrible and trashed by the media, slaughtered, and then get cut and have a coordinator job the next year, tell me where Josh McDaniels yes. is coaching. McDaniel, McDaniels will follow if he's not an offense coordinator, he'll be a quarterback's coach or he'll be a play, he'll be coaching for an offense in college. Josh McDaniel McDaniels will land on his this feet. year. McDaniels set this past year. He coached nowhere. Of course he's up for it. Kill him, boys but, up. 
That's that's but here's the thing. Hey, he Caleb still Moore's landed up. on it. When 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 McDaniel's lost his job in Denver, he landed back on his feet with Bill Belichick. He's going to land on his feet somewhere else. The problem is, if you are a highly sought after defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator, and you get hired with the Carolina Panthers, again, the expectation is that if you don't seemingly make them into a Super Bowl contender through six weeks of your first season, now you've got three more weeks to figure it out, or you're gone. And that that coordinator will get brought on <laughs> somewhere else the next year because they will understand. Yeah, oh, you went to work for David Tepper. We get it. Come on, we got you, bud. Like that's okay. That's- so is is Frank Wright <laughs> going to be hired somewhere this year? There's a chance he might be on as an offensive no, assistant and he's not going to be hired. I, I, that's if he's if he's, he's not going to get hired. A, he's going to have an assistant job. But as far as a head coach, no. No, he won't be a head coach, but he can get an assistant job just like Dan Quinn did after he got fired with the Falcons. But and there's also here's the other thing: if there's a buyout involved, and if if you take a job and you lose that money, some people will choose the money and they'll sit out until that contract is over with. Then they'll come back to football. That doesn't mean that they're not going to be able to get a job because they're not qualified all of a sudden. Martin Marty Schottenheimer had a job in the NFL. She just throw a drink on somebody like David Parker. Yeah. Yes, De- and he kept getting go- fired, man. And that was some bull how they played that man. They played that man terribly. Guys, you're going to have Dez on my us, butt because – But he's having fun. Oh, we, we went well over is, time. We're, we're 10 it. minutes over. I'm sticking with Brandon Staley. <laughs> if it's not Brandon Staley, I, I would love for Ron Rivera to come back to the Panthers organization. And it won't happen, uh, but, I mean, realistic. I or, one, heck, man. let's do um the offensive coordinator in Tampa. Dave Canales or something? Dave uh, Canales? I don't know how you pronounce his De- last name. Dez is, just because you said that, Dez is going to cancel our show. This is the last cat cave, guys. It, it probably will. He's going to cut us. Audio, he's going to cut us uh, right there. <laughs> uh, the work so he's bad. done with Gino, <laughs> the work he did with Baker. Like, I mean, just let him go work with oh, Bryce man. Young in that offense. But, um, hey, we're, we're way past the time. Thank you guys so much for sticking around with us. But it's just like – you know, you're you're at work or whatever, and <laughs> five o'clock hits, but you're in a heated argument about your uh, sports teams, and so you don't mind staying a little extra five to ten minutes. Uh, that's exactly what happened on the Cat Cave. I don't care. They uh, had fun. They had fun. When we they had, had fun, fun uh, exit the Cat <laughs> Cave till next week. We'll talk about the offense. Uh, until then, listen to more content by myself, Ryan, and Shannon on Tobacco Road Sports Radio's YouTube channel and more Carolina centric podcasts on the Keep Pound Podcast Network, powered by the Fans First Sports Network. We will see you all next week. Maybe. <laughs>